Hello everyone, I hope and pray that you are well. Uh, I have an idea for the next number of weeks, we'll see how long this lasts, but I want to tell a few Bible stories. And uh, by that I mean stories about uh, Bibles. And so here I am at the Usk Chapel. Uh, the highway is uh, right behind you there. Uh, the ferry to Usk is over there. If I look carefully through the trees here, I can see kind of the bluff where Ron Mantell has a property on the other side of the river in, in Usk as well. And uh, some of you know, of course, that this chapel was built as a centennial project uh, by members of our church, the Christian Reformed Church. Uh, Maida and, uh, and Hilda still come out here uh, regularly to stock the Usk Chapel with literature and today booklets and that kind of thing. And probably once a year or so, I get a call from somebody who wants to have their wedding here at the Usk Chapel. Now, the Usk Chapel itself is modeled after, uh, you may know, uh, the old Marsh Memorial Church, which was uh, located in Usk on the other side of the river from where we are. Uh, and it's named after Canon T.J. Marsh, uh, who devoted himself to missionary work uh, in wild uh, Canada. And anyways, as the story of, uh, of Usk goes, um, back in the flood of 1936, uh, on May 30th, uh, apparently the waters of the mighty Skeena rose very fast. And in um, a short few hours, uh, uh, the waters of the Skeena rose uh, at least 10 feet. And uh, the Skeena, of course, flooded its banks and uh, caused a ton of destruction. Uh, houses and huge trees were, were floating down the Skeena uh, at uh, speeds of up to like 20 miles an hour as the Skeena is just cruising along. A few days later, when the, when the floodwaters started to recede, uh, there was a special constable, Taft, who came and he was the first to inspect the church. That wasn't Constable Taft going by now. But anyways, Constable Taft was the first to inspect the church. And, and when he came into the church uh, building, he found it totally wrecked, except for one thing. And uh, I'll just read a little quote. This is from the Prince Rupert newspaper from June 10th, 1936. The organ was overturned. The chairs scattered all over the place and silt a foot deep covered the floors. The walls were coated with dirt. One thing only remained undamaged. In the church... He found a small table, so light that it could be picked up with one finger. A linen cloth covered the table. It was mud-stained, but on top stood the Bible. It was unspotted. And if you've been paying attention, a few years ago, uh, Paul Moravec made a, a nice little box that, that houses this replica uh, of that very Bible. And uh, I'm going to read uh, just a, a verse from, uh, from this replica Bible from Isaiah uh, 40 verse 8 it's in old english so uh here here are the words from I isaiah 40 verse 8 the grass withereth the flower fadeth but the word of our god shall stand forever and just like the risings of the the mighty fraser a few years ago 1936 it's going to be may 30th later on this week uh, I don't think the waters of the Skeena are quite going to make it as high this year as they were back in 1936. But still, um, if you look at your life, you might find that the waters um, of hurt or heartache, uh, the rising tide of loneliness or, or the, the storm surge of COVID-19, uh, whatever it is that you're facing today, uh, you might be flooded with emotions. Um, and our prayer is that we pray that may this story, uh, this Bible, the story of the Bible, God's word uh, that stands forever, may it ground you, may it be the, the firm foundation beneath your feet, and may it bring you to higher ground. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord stands forever. The peace of Christ be with you all.